everybody. Welcome back to the Mom Zoo. We got the whole crew up Hello. in the house. Hello. How's everybody doing? Kaylee, what's new with you? Good. I'm just enjoying summer. Having yeah. my kids home, I always love just having my babies around me. Yeah, not having to take them anywhere. I yes. know. And I'm going to be real honest. I really like that Braley's home because she is an early riser. Mm -hmm. And so she'll take Winston and then I just sleep in. Really? <laughs> oh, you're good. It's so nice. And she really enjoys it because he's so happy in the mornings. He just wakes up just like so happy and he's excited. And so she loves to come in and get him. Nice. And he's still not sleeping through the night. So mm -hmm. then I get to sleep for a little bit. <laughs> so it's so nice. I love it. It's nice. You know, my babies let me sleep. Praise the Lord. Oh, that's um, awesome. They go like from nine to like nine at night to about four o'clock in the morning. No, that's that's really good. good. <laughs> and they only wake up for a couple of minutes just to get like latched on. Then we go back to sleep until like six. Oh, oh that's sweet. awesome. Yeah, but forget about the babies. This goes up the day before my birthday. Oh. Okay. <laughs> Mm -hmm. So by the time this uploads, I should have lost between five to ten pounds. You can ask me in the comments below <laughs> if I have. Hopefully, I have. You've already seen it on Instagram. I don't know. Um, but I'm super excited about my birthday this what year. What are you going to do? Well, the Queen of Hearts is having a game night. Oh, I love okay. that. Yes. Okay. So, like, cute. we're going to do... I know, right? That's so I cute. Love game nights. So, yeah, we're going to do some taboo. We're going to do some card games, like mm -hmm. spoons and nerds. And so um, we'll probably have another, like, a video game game challenge oh. yeah <laughs> you always do something fun yeah, yeah I try to I try to and then hopefully if everything has gone well I will have also put up a music video oh yes I'm not singing it I just want to dance oh, that's right <laughs> I think you told me about this before. yes mm -hmm. yes so hopefully I'm saying this and it's true and if it's not I don't know what happened <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> So yeah, that's what's going on in my life. Cool, I love your life, Angel. Thank you. Music Thank videos you. And Angel Lakita Moore Tanksley. Yes, that's <laughs> my name. <laughs> what's going on with you? Well, I am loving. I love summer. Mm -hmm. I love not having my kids in school. I know a lot of parents get stressed out by having their kids home all the time, but I love it. Yeah. I love having our little schedule. We're working out like a system where they can earn commissions, so they can start earning some money, Fun. and teaching them to like give and save and like all the aspects of money and then we are getting ready for VidCon. That's going to be oh, our yeah. big yeah. big family trip and it's going to be a huge family trip this year. We're bringing oh, really? everybody. My parents are going, Shay's parents. Really? Oh, wow. Wow. Like it's going to be like a Trixon explosion <laughs> happened at VidCon. So wow. it's exciting. Yeah. We're getting wow. ready. Wow. Cool. Let's see. Basically, yeah. Go yeah. Trixon. I feel like we're living the same life because we're trying yeah. to get Trixon out the door. We've been meeting with a cut and sew company, which has been amazing to actually like piece pieces of clothing and look at fabrics and threading and labeling and tags and just all these things that you don't, you know, really wrap your brain around until you're picking through them and then exciting. watching it come to life. It's yeah. been super fun. So that will be launching VidCon. You better be there. Get your tickets. Mm -hmm. Come and see us. And Cooper is just taking over my life with baseball. Yeah, there you go. <laughs> and hopefully by the time this uploads, I'll be in my brand new house. Yay! Yay. So we'll do a house tutorial. I'm so excited. I almost feel like scared to say that, you know, like knock on wood. Yeah. Right. Buying a house is quite the process, especially oh, yeah. as being um, self-employed. And that's a whole other episode. Oh, oh I know. Yeah. I know all <laughs> so about hard it. to go through that process of getting a loan, loan. being self-employed, improving it. But mm -hmm. I guess where I make my bankers money just believe in YouTubers. Yeah. It's a real thing. <laughs> yeah. 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 Imaginary places. Yeah. What about you, world about traveler? You? Well, um, by the time this uploads, I will be just prepping for my trip to Europe. Um, but we're going to Florida. I'm actually going to Florida twice in the month of June, wow. which is crazy. So it's wow. a lot of Florida. Uh, I'm doing my first trip alone. Mm -hmm. um, not like ever, but since being a mom. Like no Michael, no baby, nothing. Oh, wow. So um, I'm, I'm excited and nervous about that, mm -hmm. but it'll be um, much needed Charizard time. Because I, I yeah. truly haven't had a night to myself to just be in my thoughts. So I'll right. have I'll have a couple of those and I'm pretty stoked. And then we're gonna go see my grandpa in Florida the next time with my with a big old family crew and I will be thirty two years old by the time this goes up. Mm -hmm. Pretty excited about that. Yeah. Not really. Thirty two. <laughs> thirty two is such a boring like I'm thirty two. I know. <laughs> 30 was fun. Something else exciting. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> 31 was great because Idris was a month old yeah. and I was like just in la la land. Now I'm like 32, but I feel good. I feel great. Yeah. You look, you look awesome. Yeah. Thanks, guys. Killing it's my it. spray tan. <laughs> 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 you guys ready for our topic of the day? Yeah, absolutely. Yes. <sighs> um, today we're going to talk about a pretty heavy duty topic and probably a lot of parents' worst nightmare is their child being kidnapped or abducted. Uh, the moms, you have the opportunity to speak with the head 
of this organization that's fighting child sexual slavery and abduction all around the world. Um, he had a lot to say about his cause, and we have a great clip that I want to show you guys, so take a look. I'm Christiana Reinhardt, executive producer at Maker Studios, and I'm here with Tim Ballard, CEO and founder of humanitarian organization Operation Underground Railroad. Tim, thanks for joining us. Thank you. It's a pleasure to be here. Yeah. Tell us a little bit about what you do. It's estimated that there's over 20 million people in slavery, and uh, roughly 10 million of those are, are, are sex slaves, people stuck in the commercial sex trade. And of those, 2 million are children. It's a worldwide problem. In the United States alone, there's over 100,000 children in the commercial sex trade, with thousands being added to that horrible list every, every year. We go in working with governments to pull children, especially children, out of slavery, sex slavery, slave labor. We go into the darkest corners of the earth and we pull these kids out. Sometimes it's an undercover operation, a sting operation, where we pose as sex tourists having a party where traffickers bring in these kids and we're working with law enforcement. Other times we do more kind of classic police work where we go in and with government and we investigate cases, we follow leads. We bring those leads to law enforcement and help and support. What does a sting operation look like domestically? In the United States, a lot of it's online. A lot of it's through social media. I talk to parents in the U.S. In the US all the time, and, and they're surprised when I tell them that, that they really don't need to be giving their children private access to Internet in their bedrooms. I say, would you let your child go bar hopping at midnight through the, through the, you know, the, the, the dirtiest parts of, of, of the United States? Well, absolutely not. They might meet someone. Well, what do you think you're doing when you're allowing them unfettered access to, to the Internet? There are hundreds of thousands of bad guys, of pedophiles, traffickers who troll the internet, troll social media, looking to gain access to children and lure them out of that house, of their own home. This is the kind of thing that moms in the United States need to be aware of. What's a piece of advice that you have for moms who might be watching about prevention of this kind of crime? I think most importantly, moms need to have total open communication with their kids. Uh, and, and they need to decide how much they want to tell them. And I have six kids, so I'm dealing with this. They need to understand the, the dangers, especially online. Our kids go out on social media and they, and they don't really see the dangers. They, they just see the fun part of it. There's a very dark side. And if we educate our kids and make, make them aware of what's going on, they can safely navigate through social media and use it and everything else. But it's all about open communication. And, and uh, we, we invite moms to come onto our website where they can become part of this movement. They can become abolitionists, we call them, and bring their kids along. That helps provide that education and that awareness. Tim, thank you so much for joining us. To find out more about Operation Underground Railroad, visit the links in the description below. Moms, back to you. Um, so that's pretty intense. What are some of your guys' initial thoughts? I think I'm grateful for this platform because as uncomfortable as it is to address topics like these and to tiptoe, not tiptoe around the issue, but say things that maybe are uncomfortable for people to watch. I also think we, it's, it's a blessing because we have this platform for a reason and it's to share topics like this so we can spread awareness. And I'm grateful that we're talking about it because it reminds me, it can remind you guys, and then you guys can take it from here and share this video and just, you know, spreading awareness is the best thing that we can do to get the word out and just to open people's eyes about what really is going on. I had no idea the numbers were that high. Mm -hmm. I know, it blows my mind yeah. to think that this exists in this day and age, you know what I'm saying? Like, of course, you know, there are, uh, are uh, predators everywhere, but to know that the numbers are that staggering, even right. domestically. Well, I think that's what really shocks crazy. me too. You always think that something like this happens somewhere far away. Like, yeah, oh, right. this would never happen in our country. You know, our country right. is so wonderful and we have all these laws and, you know, um, you just don't even let your mind, like you don't wrap your mind around that. Right. That, that there could be some creepy pedophiles online constantly trolling and looking at your kids and trying to lure them out of your house so they can kidnap them and sell them as sex slaves. Like that, <sighs> I mean, it makes me so angry and disgusting, and I, yeah, I mean, obviously I think we all feel the same way about yeah. that, but I think it's, it's overwhelming to think about, um, you know, we're all so, like, public, and people know so much about us, and they know what our kids look like, and they, you know, we post where we are and where we hang out and this and that, and it's hard to... Think about how to keep them safe, right. you know? I, when Marcus was in preschool, I took a seminar on how to protect your child from a child molester. So I'm all about prevention. Like yeah. That, yeah. But um, I know one thing, even with us having our children online, 
showing that we're active, really active in our children's lives mm -hmm. is one of the big deterrents that will keep someone from right. targeting your child because they know that we pay attention. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Predator's greatest fear is being caught. Right. So to be, um, to target someone who's parent they know is very attentive and very involved in that child's life just ex um, um, makes the chance of them being harder. good. Yes, it makes right. it harder. So that's one thing that brings me some relief is to know that I am so nosy and so part of my child's life the way that all of you all are as well that mm -hmm. it gives us a better chance of not being one of these parents that has to, you know, go through this of right. not knowing where their child is, knowing that their child's been abducted. Right. right. Oh. I, I like the point that he made that you don't need to let your kid have a computer in their room. That is something that right. I am so adamant about. My children will not have a computer in their room right. for a lot of different reasons, but because there are so many predators and I will be the kind of parent that is like, what are you doing? I get your password. I get to check on you. Not because I don't trust my child, because I don't trust other people. Right. Yeah, yeah. absolutely. But it's, it's your terrifying. job to be the parent and it's your, their job to be the kid. And mm -hmm. I used to think that it was invasive and it was like, a get, you know, that's their privacy or whatever. But a lot of times kids don't understand the dangers that they're in. Right. And that's our job as a parent to make sure that we keep them safe, even if it is invasive or it's not, uh, you know, in their privacy. If they're under my roof, like I want to know everything. And, you know, how bad would we all feel as mothers if we're like, well, I shouldn't read their journal and we could have stopped something yeah. because... You know, with all the apps that's downloaded on our phones constantly, there's Vine, there's Tinder, there's Instagram, there's Facebook, there's Twitter, there's, you know, you can't keep up, and this is our job. I can't mm -hmm. keep up, and I can't imagine where it's going to be when Cooper has, you know, a phone, and I think that I love what he said. The key word is communication with mm -hmm. our kids, mm -hmm. and this might be silly, but I tell Cooper when he goes into the bathroom, because he's now mm -hmm. at that age where I can't take him into the women's bathroom, mm -hmm. but I hate sending him into the men's bathroom alone, but I tell him straight up, when you go to the bathroom, you watch around you and you make sure that nobody tries to talk to you or touch your privates. Mm -hmm. I say that to him every time mm -hmm. and he might brush me off and be like, oh, mom. But it's a scary thing and when I'm tra traveling all the time or in the Vegas bathroom or the LA bathroom or wherever, mm -hmm. it makes me worried that I can't be in there to watch him. But I think that the more attention kids know that you know there's certain things that people can't touch and the more knowledge we give our children, it's power. Mm -hmm. I don't think that we could ever be wrong and I love when you said communication with our kids. Right. Amen, brother. Mm -hmm. Amen. I totally agree. And especially where we are so public, um, my kids know like you, I'm sorry, I know all of your nine-year-old friends have iPhones. You will not have mm -hmm. one. Mm -hmm. I'm right. sorry. You know, like I, we've talked to them about those dangers. We've had the talk with them and they know like there are just some things that I don't even want you to have to worry about right now. Right. Right. Yeah. right. And so we're not even going to give you that access. Um, the, the computer that we have is right in the middle of the room. Mm -hmm. You know, it's very public. And I think just being super open with them. Right. Especially where, like, people do know our kids. And yeah. we've told them, like, I don't care if somebody knows your name. If they're trying to talk to you and we're not right by you, like, don't even go there. Like, mm -hmm. don't talk to them. Don't say hi. Walk away you know, whatever you need to do. You know, it was a different world for me when I grew up, and I feel right. bad that theirs is different, but it is the way it is. Yeah, yeah. absolutely. Okay. Shaylin uh, Evertson asks, uh, do you insist on meeting your kids' friends' parents before a play date or sleepover? Yes, yes. yes. Right? If I mean, I'm like, gonna be duh. there, absolutely. I'm gonna right. Google you, I'm gonna drive to your house, I'm gonna, and no, I'm just kidding, but kind <laughs> yeah, of you gotta not. Know what you're <laughs> <right>. <laughs> and unless it's like a family member or a close, close family friend, I don't do sleepovers. Oh, right. really? Yeah, mm -hmm. I don't yeah. do sleepovers. None of you guys, mm -hmm. did you do sleep, you too, nope. Angel? Don't do sleepovers. What? You don't really know anyone. You right. don't know the dad, really. You yeah. don't know the brothers, you don't know there's just okay, too many things that can happen. And what about if happen. you know the parents And there's really too many well. like sneaking around. Yeah. Yeah. If it's a close family friend, right. then I would consider it. We did a sleep. <laughs> She's like, actually, uh, no. no. They can sleep at my house. Right. Yeah. I know. I did. Um, little Marcus did a sleepover once just because we didn't have an option. Uh, we were going to celebrate my girlfriend's 30th birthday. I literally drove up that night. We went out to the club at four o'clock in the morning, leaving the club. I drove back mm -hmm. to L.A. Yeah. to get my child. Mm -hmm. That was the end of his sleepover. I was just really? like, that was, all right. <laughs> yeah. I just it. have so many childhood memories of sleepovers. I know, I know. Like, I, mean, I feel like when they're younger, because you, they can't get in much, I mean, at my house, but I just saw what my friends did at sleepover. It's not like it was anything bad, but the one sleepover I did go to, they're like, let's sneak out. I'm like, this is the one time my mom lets me sleep over, and yeah. this is the exact reason why she doesn't let me have them, because you guys want to sneak out, me boys. I snuck out. I snuck out all the time. That's why I won't 
course. That's why we have sleepovers in my house. And I want your good kids girl. to have those memories. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. It's like we mentioned before, it's a different world. Like, I, I mean, we didn't do anything bad or anything like that. It's just I'm a transplant in L.A., so the longest I've known anybody here is 10 years. That's not enough. Mm -hmm. I like the okay. rule. You can stay okay. up, stay as late as you want. Stay up, stay until 2 o'clock, but there's no re reason, reason why you need to have a sleepover. You're sleeping. Come over early. If you want to sleep, you come over. I'll okay. make us some pancakes. Okay. But. Is, yeah, it's a whole new world for me. <laughs> What's the next question? Um, all right. Shayna, another great name. Shayna Boyle asks, how do you encourage your kids to be nice and friendly to all, yet keep their guard up and be wary of strangers at the same time? So My child hard. doesn't have to be nice and friendly to all. I don't know when that became a rule. Mm -hmm. Okay. He doesn't. Yeah. Right. I mean, if he doesn't feel comfortable talking to someone, fine. But what's then classified you might be as nice and friendly? Right. You know, like I think you could be polite and use your manners, but yeah, you don't you don't right. have to encourage your kids to like talk to everybody. No, know. yeah, he don't have to speak to anybody. He might be reading somebody's spirit that I'm not reading. Okay. And be like, there's a reason why he doesn't feel comfortable talking to that person. So you ain't got to talk to him. Mm -hmm. You ain't yeah. writing no check. All right. For your talents? <laughs> no. Mm -mm. Nope. I think it's hard, like at VidCon or Playlist, when people are so excited to meet the kids and they mm -hmm. feel like they know them and it's, you know, they just really are excited to meet the kids and I want my kids to be like, hi, you know, excited right. to meet them too. At the same time, you're trying to teach them stranger danger and you don't talk. Or even I notice at the airport with Winston, ever, you know, strangers will be like, hi, and I'm like, say hi to him. Yeah. You know, and it's such so a cute. hard, weird thing. Yeah. Do you? Mm -hmm. Yeah, I mean, I, I mean, my son is one. I've right. only been doing this for a year. I have no idea how I'm going to be as like a parent when I have a kid that's leaving the house and going and doing other things when I'm not there. Mm -hmm. um, but yeah, I mean, Idris is always like, da, 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 mm -hmm. and yeah. I, I like that. And people yeah. are always waving at him, right. and I'm always like picking up his hand and saying, say hi, you know, and I just. <laughs> I don't know. I don't. I feel like there's. That's still innocent. I'm like standing, yeah. holding right. him, whatever. But I don't know if it'll get to a point where I'm like, uh, -uh baby, don't, don't talk to that person. Mm -hmm. yeah. You know, because I have had some moments where there's been some creepy people around me, and I'm very protective. And we were at the park, and I vlogged about this. There was a creepy guy in the park, and he. It was like a sixth sense or something, and he made me so uncomfortable. He was a grown man alone at a park in the middle of the week on like a school day. I'm like, you have zero business being here. Like it's, it, it was so awkward. I immediately left the, mm -hmm. left the park. Mm -hmm. And Andres was running straight for him too. Okay. And I was like, <laughs> oh, like give me my baby. You. I was like, you're either gonna rob me or try and steal my son. Yeah. And it was, um, it was a creepy moment. It was actually one of the first like really, um, I guess kind of scary mom moments that I've had. And it yeah. could have been nothing, but I had a gut feeling and I was like, I'm out. Follow and it, the yeah. whole way home, I was looking behind me. I was like, is this guy following me? Like, I called Michael right away. I was like, I want you to know where I am right now. Yeah. He's like, okay, get home. Yeah. And I mean, you know, then I watched the news. I was like, where is this? Where is this? Yeah. Yeah. Guy? <laughs> Not to keep bringing up this class, but uh, the class that I took about protecting your child from um, predators, that was one thing she said, don't make your child speak to everybody. And she even meant family members. She was like, if your child does not want to talk to creepy uncle Bob, yeah. you know, let them figure out the way that they want to communicate. Don't force them to have to be so social with everybody. Now, when it comes to like people that I know my son has spoken to before, mm -hmm. I, I definitely am like, you know, speak up, say some, say hello. But my child does not have to be kind and friendly to everybody. I don't know where that rule came from. Right. That's a really good but point. I never thought of that. I never thought yeah. of that either. Because I'm definitely the mother to be like, say hi, because mm -hmm. I take it, like, it makes me feel like I did something wrong. Mm -hmm. Like, oh, yeah. my kid's not a rude kid. We're not rude people. So, right. you know, say hi, but that makes really good sense, because yeah. kids do, are very innocent. They do feel things differently than we do, and maybe right. if they don't want to say hi to creepy Uncle Bob, then creepy Uncle Bob. Creepy Uncle Bob. I just, I, I'll give him a way out if he's being shy. I'm like, oh, he's being shy today. Right. For sure. That's true. I mean, yeah. we definitely feel like I mean, there's a lot of people that know our kids, so when we when we go to events where people are going to know the kids, then we definitely give them a prep talk, like, okay, we're going to be here, this is where we get to smile and say thank you to all our viewers, but you stay close to me, you don't have to talk to anybody you won't want to, like, we try to yeah. give them a pep talk, like, let's be smile and say thank you, but, you know, when you're tired and you're done, then you can go back with Cecily and we'll keep talking, and like, you know? Mm -hmm. And, hugging random strangers? Yeah, yeah. yeah. I you don't. Know what I mean, like, I, I don't want Brayley hugging a random no, stranger. I don't. <laughs> like, uh, uh, uh. That's right, yeah. I'm sorry. I really let my kids know, especially Brayley, like, this can happen. Right. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And maybe it's not 
it's not a pretty thing and it's not a lovely, nice thing, mm -hmm. conversation I want to have with her, but I want her to know like this can happen and this is why because she's at the age where she's like, why can't I do this? Why mm -hmm. can't I talk to she's this dead. person? She wants to understand. Yeah, she mm -hmm. just wants to know and I have to be brutally honest with her mm -hmm. and right. I think that it's, it's smart to do that. Thanks for a great episode. I know, again, it's not always easy to talk about this kind of thing, but um, you know, we hope you guys enjoyed this subject, even though it was yeah. a little bit more heavy duty. As always, please feel free to let us know what kind of content you would like to see from us. You know, we want to keep it open. We want to make content that we enjoy that you guys enjoy too. So mm -hmm. leave suggestions below. Um, you can always keep the convo going by using the hashtag TMV Talk. And we hope you guys have a great day. So like, share, comment, subscribe, and we'll see you soon. Be safe out there. Bye. Bye. Bye.